Hey guys, this is Austin. Have you ever wanted to use a mouse and keyboard on a console? While the Xbox One controller is about as good as it gets for a gamepad, and the DualShock 4 is a huge step up from the last generation, there's still no substitute for a proper mouse and keyboard. That's where the Keymander comes in. This is an emulator that lets you use a mouse and keyboard to replace a normal controller. It's pretty straightforward. Grab the box, and inside you'll find the Keymander itself, a pair of mini USB cables for connecting to the console and PC, and some paperwork along with the driver CD, which you should definitely not use. What the Keymander does is pretend to be a normal Xbox or PlayStation controller by using your actual controller and passing the signal through along with a mouse and keyboard. The Keymander itself is pretty small. On one side, you'll see three USB ports for the controller, keyboard, and mouse. On the other side are ports to connect to the console, your PC, as well as an optional power port. To get everything up and running, you'll need a keyboard as well as a mouse and either an Xbox One or PS4 controller. You can also use the Keymander on the PS3 or 360, although for the 360 you will need the wired controller. Just plug in your keyboard, mouse, and controller on one side and connect the mini USB cables to the game and PC ports. Then just hook it up to your PC and console. Out of the box it won't work, so you'll need to head over to their site, which I'll have linked in the description, and download both the firmware as well as the software which is Windows only. Here, go to Menu and then select Upgrade Firmware. Then just select the downloaded firmware and give it a few minutes to update the Keymander. You can create your own profiles for each console and game, and you'll want to spend some time customizing these. By default it maps things reasonably well, but some of the buttons are weirdly set up on a keyboard. Tweaking the mouse sensitivity can also be a big help. Once everything is set up, you can save your profile and disconnect your PC. Now you will need to keep the controller connected to the Keymander, but besides that it's pretty seamless. Navigating the menu with the keyboard works just like you'd expect. The directional keys replace the D-pad, and the spacebar works for the X button, although of course you can customize this to whatever you want. Jump into a game like Last of Us, and the advantage of using a mouse and keyboard is noticeable, even though it might not be a super twitchy shooter like Call of Duty or Counter-Strike. The keyboard works very well with essentially no lag, but the mouse can be a bit weird. Since it's essentially replacing the right stick on the controller, the movements aren't quite as clean as on a PC, but as long as you get the sensitivity right, it's close enough. Using a decent gaming mouse helps a lot here. There is a slight amount of lag with the mouse, but it's not a deal breaker. It's probably not good enough if you're a super competitive gamer, but it's still an improvement over a controller for me. Using a keyboard can be a big advantage for some other games as well. The buttons on the DualShock 4 are decent, but they can't quite match up with the feeling of a solid mechanical keyboard. If you have any issues with mice and keyboards not working, or just want to use a laptop, you can use play mode. Plug anything you want to use, including joysticks into your computer, and then with the Keymander connected, pick play mode in the software. This will disable any keyboards, mice, or trackpads from working on Windows, however you'll now be able to use them to control the game. I definitely wouldn't recommend using a trackpad for gaming, however this is really helpful for keyboards and mice that don't want to work directly into the Keymander. Move over to the Xbox One and things are a bit simpler. The controller works without a problem, and it recognizes more keyboards and mice than the PS4 does. A driving game like Forza Horizon 2 is a lot better with a controller than a keyboard, but it will work. Minecraft makes a bit more sense, as I always preferred the PC controls, however this is a good example of where the mouse doesn't quite match how a controller works. Navigating tight spaces can be a bit of a chore. First person shooters like Titanfall are really where the mouse and keyboard shine. After a quick customization of the controls, I felt a lot sharper than I ever have with the Xbox One controller. It's definitely not for everyone, but if you're a PC gamer, using a mouse and keyboard for console exclusives like The Last of Us can be a big help. The setup can be a bit finicky, and the slight lag on the mouse is less than ideal, but overall the Keymander is a very cool little accessory. So what do you guys think? Is a controller good enough, or would you prefer a mouse and keyboard? Definitely be sure to let me know in the comments below. Anyway, I've got to give a big shout out to ShapeUp for making this video possible. Only for the Xbox One, ShapeUp is a game that's all about making working out fun. It gives you a variety of different workouts that range from running, punching, push-ups and way more, and quick 90 second bursts. Clearly, I go to the gym all the time. I mean, have you guys seen this? But seriously, I was really surprised at how much more fun working out is with ShapeUp. It all uses the Kinect, which does a really solid job of tracking your body, no need for a controller or even a mouse and keyboard, and you can record your replays to compete against yourself or friends. ShapeUp is out now, so definitely be sure to check out the trailer and the link in the description of this video. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.